what is Kubernetes? Um, Kubernetes is another way, it's a way to manage containers like Docker containers or Rocket containers and their workloads and being able to scale up as demand increases and then scale down as needed. Um, so they would be a, another evolution for running a, a web stack, for example, on a bare metal machine and having that deployed out or VMs to VMs to containers and Kubernetes would fall into that realm. Um, so, and having that degree of automation and ha being able to say, to declaratively say, hey, I'd like to have like a minimum of three, three pods going at once and scale up or down. Uh, that's kind of nice to be able to say what you want and Kubernetes fills that need. So a little bit of history. Uh, Kubernetes was released in mid 2014. Uh, it was a open sourced by Google. Um, they had been working on a scaling, they've been in the scaling systems and services space for, uh, let's see, how old is Google again? <laughs> Um, under a project called Borg, hence uh, Picard. Uh, and one of the fun facts was for uh, Kubernetes, the uh, original, one of the original project names was uh, Project um, Seven from Seven of Nine, the, the Star Trek character, um, as an evolution of that. For some reason, that wouldn't fly through legal. Can't imagine why. Um, and uh, eventually, one of the uh, co-founders of the project, uh, Craig McLucky, uh, posited like, okay, this technology is like driving a container ship. So what would the word helmsman be in Greek? And that's how Kubernetes was named. Um, and thank you for attending my TED talk uh, on It's All Greek to Me, Naming Your Open Source Projects. Um, so going into some of the terminology, um, some of these will seem familiar. Some of these will seem familiar, but they're a little bit different, and then some of them are new. So let's go right into it. Uh, let's start with a container. This is a Docker container. This is a Rocket container. This is a pick your container technology, uh, and there you go. So I think, I think we're all good with that one. Cool. Uh, next, we're going to talk about a pod. Um, so all a pod is, is a collection of a bunch of containers that are all, they all scale up together, they all scale down together. If a container within a pod dies, another container comes right back into that pod and, and basically takes its place. Um, pods are... <laughs> Pods have their own IP address, so, and we'll talk about multiple pods, but what that means is um, they, you can have multiple containers working with multiple ports running. So if you've got two pods, like both have Nginx exposing port 80, um, you're okay. One of the things though is pods can die. They live, they die. That's the end of it. Um, pods don't have to have multiple containers, though. They can just be a single container um, pod, and that's totally OK. Um, so next, we're going to go into volumes. Uh, volumes are similar to Docker's concept of a volume in the sense that, hey, here's, here are all these files. Put them here. Um, in Kubernetes, a volume can be shared amongst all of the different containers. Um, so like, okay, a container goes down and we're filling up that volume and you know it's coming back up and another ones and we're keeping on going down and we fill up that volume. By default, there's an empty directory um, volume that when the pod dies, that also wipes the volume. So depending on how you have it set up, it could be a little, um, it might not be what you expect. That being said, you can mount um, ELB or, 
or you can mount a file system to it, like NFS. You can mount like one of Amazon solutions. I think it's ELB. Um, I don't know my Amazon AWS acronym, so um, or Google's thing. And basically, and the way that it would work is, you know, we're doing the same thing. We're filling up. We're killing off the pod. Uh, the pod gets killed off usually automatically. But now when we come back up with one of those like network, essentially a network mount, it still, um, it still has all that information. So that's cool. Um, next is a node. Um, a node is essentially a collection of pods. Um, and a node can be, uh, can be a machine. Um, it can be, it's basically like a worker for, um, for, for the overall cluster, um, the overall Kubernetes cluster, um, as we're talking about here. So, so we still have like our little uh, container there, and then our pod, and then our, um, and then our node, and we've got a cluster, and we have essentially a controller all the way over there, uh, which send is which is essentially what's saying. Okay, I want three pods spun up. So that's how that, um, so that basically controls that. Um, deployments. So deployments essentially are another concept, and that's another way to specify okay, we want three pods going of container, my favorite things, 0.1.0.4. Um, and then during a deployment, it will scale, it'll bring up new pods to, to fill the, the new requirements and then start tearing down the old ones. So you get essentially a zero downtime um, solution. And you can roll back as well, so you can go the other way. Um, so that's kind of nice. Uh, services. So we have pods. We have pods that they have IP addresses. It knows its IP address. It doesn't know what other IP addresses are in other nodes necessarily. And because nodes can die and be reborn with a different IP, there's not really a way to like have a list from within the pod to have a list of what IPs it knows about. So there are these things called services. And services are essentially ways to label pods as, um, as like, OK, I, I know I need to send this message to a, a Redis cluster, for example, or a Redis, um, uh, like a Redis pod. So I'll refer to the Redis service, and it'll get there. Um, and then a service is also how you end up exposing uh, Kubernetes to the internet. Um, basically through a load balancer. So um, imagining like a line between the, huh, that's sunlight. Well, imagine there's another like um, uh, dark yellow uh, circle kind of around there. And, it's bas and basically there's a load balancer that's distributing traffic from like the internet or, or even like from here um, to one of the available pods. Um, and the last thing is secrets. Um, you'll notice that there's nothing there, and that's because secrets are secret. Um, it's a way to essentially send like OAuth tokens or database credentials in a secure way without having to, it, another way to publish um, secret information without having to um, ha include that like explicitly within a container. Um, you can set it as an environment variable. You can set it as a file uh, that you can put kind of anywhere that you'd like. Um, so a couple related tools. Um, there's kubectl, kube control. You can communicate with the cluster. Um, and I'll be using that in the demo. Uh, there's kube convert. So, if you already have your Docker Compose YAML file, um, this will essentially convert that into Kubernetes resources, which is its own YAML file structure. 
Um, but from there, you can you can basically kind of have that convert that over so that you can uh, use that instead. Uh, Minikube is essentially your very own local Kubernetes cluster if you, in a VM. It's a single cluster. Um, that's not what I will be demoing because this is a Mac, and VMs and Docker running on a Mac will kill it. Um, and then Helm, uh, where you can use someone else's chart as if it were a package. And a chart is essentially instructions for a, a Kubernetes cluster. Like, OK, yeah, this is what we want set up. This is everything we want. Um, earlier today, I was doing a little bit of research. And it turns out that there is a, a Helm chart for GitLab. Um, so you could essentially, as an example, run the GitLab community server um, basically in a Kubernetes cluster in like four lines of, of command line code. Um, so that's kind of nice. Did I mention the caveat? I think I mentioned the caveat. Um, don't manage databases through Kubernetes. Um, let's see. The other one is don't manage databases through Kubernetes. Don't manage rightful databases through Kubernetes. The reason being, we mentioned volumes. We, mounted, we, we mentioned mounting a volume. We scale that right. We, we scale that volume up that has Kubernetes. So now we have like three pods, let's say, all talking to a common data source. So now we've got three applications that are trying to write to this uh, source that that's not going to end well. That's going to um, not work out too well. Um, so one, one way to get around that, though, is just to essentially start up a, a separate database um, server and then refer to that, like send the credentials into your um, as a secret. And, and actually, that's what I'm doing in the, in the demo. Um, but aside from that caveat, um, we're going to do a little bit of a demonstration. We're going to do a, we're going to go through Minikube a little bit. Um, just essentially like here are some, here are the commands, here's the output, here's what you see, and magic like that. Because again, VM, a little bit older uh, MacBook, not great. Um, so. We're going to start just Minikube start. I did not add any of these emojis. These emojis are part of this. So, um, but essentially, um, I had brew. I had used Homebrew to bring in uh, Minikube and Cube Control, uh, and then Minikube start. It'll download an ISO. It'll uh, start creating the VirtualBox VM. I use VirtualBox. Um, it'll Basically, like take care of bringing in Kubelet, uh, Cube AEDM, uh, Cube Admin, pull down images, launch Kubernetes, wait for a couple other services, and uh, can go through that. Um, there's a dashboard that you can see, uh, Minikube dashboard. It'll verify its own health, uh, proxy, and then let's see. There's going to be a bright screen warning. Um, so, and this is essentially what you would see. Um, you can see, well, maybe not. Uh, I, it's, I'm pointing at localhost, port 59058. Um, and you get this kind, of, it, this kind of pretty looking dashboard. You can tell it's Google because it, it's the material theme. Um, but here you can take a look at like what namespaces, uh, nodes, volumes, Storage, cron jobs, deployments, jobs, pods, replica sets, um, and other things. Um, so then for a hello world, essentially, use kube control, create deployment, hello node. Um, this image happens to point to essentially a hello world image, very, I, I would say small, but it is still a Docker container, so it's still like 400 megs. Um, but essentially, it's, it's that easy. Um, and then when you run kube control get deployments, 
it'll show you a list of uh, basically how many how many um, how many pods we're looking for. We only want one. How many are we at? We're at one. How many are up to date? Um, because uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's a period of time during a deployment where you're spinning up new pods and then you're bringing down the old ones. So up to date, how many are available? Only seven seconds old. Uh, I think I ran this before they were actually fully set up. Um, and then uh, cube control get pods, uh, name, hello, node. that just happened to be the random name. How many are ready? It's running. It hasn't restarted yet. It's three minutes old. Uh, and then finally, for uh, creating the service and then being able to say, like to go to uh, localhost uh, port 8080, I think, um, kubectl expose deployment, hello node. Uh, type load balancer is what says, okay, we want to, um, like we have n pods, we want to distribute traffic like through its Kubernetes's uh, basic load balancer. Um, so that's what exposes the service hello node. Um, and then we'll see some kubectl get services. Um, the, for minikube, there will never be an external IP that ends up getting exposed, but go to localhost port 8080 and hello world. Um, so, there's the, so there's the cluster IP address. Um, and then the external IP address would be essentially where you could reach the, the service on, um, on the public internet, for example. Um, Okay, and never mind. So Minikube service, hello node. Um, so that actually that would be the URL for that. So let's briefly go where no one's gone before. Well, okay, a lot of people have done it before. Um, and we're gonna go through a little project. Um, I'm gonna do my favorite things and I'm gonna bump up the font size so it's actually visible because it's the little things in life, right? Can you tell that I do not go through Sublime terribly often on, oh, there we go, what was that? So I've got a couple folders. There's a Kubernetes folder, there's a deployment uh, YAML so the so back when I was describing cube uh, or yeah cube convert to convert uh, from Docker um, from the basically all those uh, Docker services over to Kubernetes, this YAML file could be something that would get spit out. So um, just quickly going through the YAML file, there's an API version. Uh, there's what kind it is. There's a it's a deployment. Um, you could also set up these kinds of YAML files for secrets or for pods or for um, or kind of any other resource like that. Um, there's some metadata, uh, the specifications. We want three pods uh, running that match my favorite things. Funny thing, uh, that actually does. Um, and then a template. Um, and then the temp template specifications, uh, it's got containers. Um, it just has the one container, um, and it's my favorite things, uh, with an image pointing to a GitLab thing that I set up, um, ports, expose port 80, um, a couple environment files or environment variables. Um, so I, when I mentioned secrets, there was both uh, secret files, and then secret environment variables that you could uh, go with either way. Um, I just happened in this case to go with the uh, environment um, uh, variables. So, but I refer to it as database host, database password, even though it's like private dash do dash whatever. Um, 
database port, username, all that jazz. And our public index um, .php, it's just pulling in those env, uh, env variables, host port name, character set. Select star from things where is favorite is one. Um, just a quick glance at the data structure. I apologize again from the, for the night mode to day mode suddenness. Um, and it's just a table of things, ID, name, when I created it, is it a favorite? Uh, I inserted raindrops and roses, whiskers on kittens, you, you know the song. Um, so we're back here and we're just going, uh, we're just doing a for each HTML special chars because uh, that's always a, a good thing to do. Um, oh, and then our Docker file. Um, I'm just, for the overall Docker file, it's just PHP 7.3, bring in Apache, sim relatively simple for Docker. Um, copy in the public folder under var dubs HTML, copy over this CA certificate um, into Etsy database. Um, and that's because DigitalOcean, um, I'm, I've got it spun up through DigitalOcean, both the, uh, the database and the Kubernetes uh, cluster. Um, so let's go ahead and hop to the terminal and zoom in. How's that looking? Good, bad? All right, awesome. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and make a quick change. Let's go ahead and change something. Um, let's go ahead and just, uh, I don't know. Uh, let's make this an H2 tag um, because we want to make sure, we want to make sure uh, folks know what our favorite things are um, that a paragraph tag just cannot do. So if we go to, uh, let's see, kubectl, get services. Um, then we get a list of, okay, here's, here's this one cluster. Here's my favorite thing service, which I had running. Here's an external IP address. There is a way to associate, by the way, like this external IP address with a domain so that, you know, it's a little bit more useful. Um, for the purposes of this demo, I'm just leaving it as uh, an IP address that's just exposed online. Um, so we have here are my favorite things and all those uh, things. So what we're going to go ahead and do real quick is um, quickly build a new version of the Docker container. So build T registry, uh, my favorite things. Um, Changing it from a paragraph to a, um, to an H2 tag, I mean, that's pretty important, so that's a minor uh, revision. Um, all right, so we've got that built. And we'll go ahead and Docker uh, push registry and push 1.1.0. .1 We're going to wait as the layer, most of the layers already exist anyway, so. So we pushed that. So we pushed that uh, container up. So actually, if we go to GitLab, I'm not going to bother signing in um, because I need my phone for that, and that's turned off for right now. And two-factor authentication is important, but that's okay. Um, so next, what we'll do is let's see, kubectl. Um, roll out, let's do first check the status of the previous deployment, roll out status deployment. That's okay. Uh, kubectl, um, edit deployment. So for editing this deployment, um, there's essentially this um, deployment object. Um, I've made a couple changes to it before. It does show the, the last applied configuration um, and it happens to be the first because uh, down here the, the image uh, is latest. Um, for something like this, using latest isn't quite the, the best as I discovered. Um,
but we'll go ahead and kind of go through some of these. Um, max search, max unavailable. There's our environment variables. Here's our image. Uh, pool policy is always, always pull it. Don't worry about caching. Um, let's see. Uh oh. Uh, termination grace period status. Uh, good news is we have the minimum. We last time we did make the minimum availability. All right, so that edited that. So next, if we do status, it's already rolling out. We edited the deployment. It automatically starts to to bring that in. So that's where we have like rollout to finish. One out of three have been updated. Two out of three, and then we're scaling back down for the old ones, and that's where the one old replicas are pending termination. So now we have an H2 tag. We, we were able to update a container uh, based on that. Um, and that was um, pretty much the demo. Uh, let me CTL edit secret database. Um, and I'm going to be clearing out the database kind of after this, so I don't mind showing the Space64 encoded um, host properties. Um, but basically, what you can do is um, you can either Base64 encode a new secret, like a new string, basically, and put it in here and then save. Um, it's smart enough to say, oh, wait, nothing changed. Um, it also won't do another deployment unless you explicitly kick one off, uh, which you can do with kubectl, rollout, not start. Um, let's see, what was it? Uh, restart, that's the one. And then if we go back to this rollout status, we're rolling that out. We didn't change anything, so... Um, so the good news is that's still that. Um, the good news is the documentation for Kubernetes is pretty decent. Um, and it is on the Kubernetes One uh, website as well. Um, so aside from that, and that's essentially a quick, a quick dive into um, Kubernetes and kind of how to get that changed, how to um, how to be able to apply a couple uh, different things, um, like either changing code, like with a new container, an updated container. Um, so revisiting the agenda, what is Kubernetes? We went over some of the more uh, common terminology, some related tools, uh, the main caveat, um, and then the quick demo. Uh, so with that, um, are there any questions?